Well, hello, welcome back, welcome back. So today in week uh, five, uh, this will be week five Monday for uh, Dr. Brunk's class. Um, what we're gonna be talking about today is actually the cross-coupling reactions. So uh, what do I mean by cross-coupling? Well, when I say cross-coupling, all I mean is just making new CC bonds. Now, most of the reactions that we'll be learning today actually is a lot of Nobel Prize winning reactions. So these are extremely important reactions for the chemistry world. Um, and we'll be making CC bonds using metal catalysts. So you'll see things like ruthenium, palladium, as well as other uh, different things. Okay, so, but just one more thing in general, um, every time we look for an electrophile in all these reactions, the electrophile that we'll be looking at is vinyl halides or aryl halides. So a benzene ring with the halide for aryl halides or a CC double bond for just the vinyl halides. Now, when I say X, it also just means CLs, BRs, or Is. So just uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so one of the first reactions that we're going to be talking about is actually something you've already done, or you think you've already done. So all the way back in uh, Chem A day, what we talked about is how we can hydrogenate uh, different alkene groups. And so when I talk about alkene groups, I mean, well, we have a CC double bond, and we have H2, add palladium on carbon, and well, all we do is just add two H's assist to each other. Okay, so this is really cool because, you know, we added two H's just by using some metal, but one thing we need to know is that it's heterogeneous. What do I mean by that? Well, when I say heterogeneous, I mean your palladium on carbon is in a solid phase. So it's like you adding dust to your uh, reaction mixture, whereas your alkene that you add is going to be in a liquid phase. So they're going to be in two different phases, and so it'll be heterogeneous because they're different from each other. However, back in uh, 1973, or actually, well, earlier than that, uh, Dr. Uh, Sir, Wil Sir Jeffrey Wilkinson actually invented a new type of hydrogenation, a one-pot uh, match. So instead of adding palladium on carbon, as we did above, we can add H2 and in benzene, uh, usually, we can also add this thing called Wilkinson's reagent, which is a rhodium. Uh, phos uh, phosphine complex with Cl. And if we add all these together, we can add the two H's, similar to what we did above, right over here. But the thing is, is that these are all homogenous because all of these reagents are all in liquid. And so that's what, one of your first reactions. Okay, moving on. Uh, Cashel Stevens, so in fact, the two PhD students back at UCR also had their own type of reaction. And so looking at the reagents that we have over here, we first have this aryl halide, so some benzene ring with a halide group, so Cl, Br, or I. We not only have that, but we also have a terminal alkyne. So an alkyne, so a triple bond ending with an H right here. Now I listed here as M plus, M naught, and base, but what I mean by that is it's either usually copper plus copper metal, and then some base could be, you know, triethylamine or diisopropylamine, but things like that, right? So these are all the different possibilities you could have. But when I add all of those together, especially with the copper, copper plus and the copper metal, we can make the new bond from where this halide was and where this H was to make a new bond right over here. And so this entire coupling is called the Castro Stevens. So it's one of the important reactions you'll be learning. Okay, so keep in mind the, react, the reactants that you used, right? We used an aryl halide and terminal alkyne, but also keep in mind the reagents. We only use copper or silver or some other type of metal. Now, when we talk about the Sonogashira reaction, in this case, we're not, we're also using a terminal alkyne and this time we'll be using a vinyl halide. Now this is slightly different because now we add copper iodide, so you know just some CUI, uh, some base as well, so HNE2, and then palladium. Now this reagent right here is the most important one, is that we're using palladium. And so because we're using this palladium, we can make a new bond between this triple bond and wherever the halide was on this vinyl halide, and we make this new bond right here. We make a triple bond to a CCR bond. That palladium catalyst is the big one. 
is the big difference between this reaction, the Sonny Gashira reaction, and the Castro Stevens. In this reaction, we didn't have any palladium. But in Sonny Gashira, well, we had palladium. So that's one of the biggest differences in all of these. Okay. Another thing, too, is that all the different reagents also do have specific functions. So in this case, uh, you know, these reactants at the top here activate the alkyne, or make it reactive. Whereas these re this reagent, the palladium reagent at the bottom right here, well, this reagent uh, activates the vinyl halide. So just to keep those in mind. Okay, the next reaction we'll be learning is the steel reaction. So in this case, we use tin. So the way you can recognize this entire reaction is if you have tin. That's the big difference in all of these. Now, we also have a vinyl halide. So, you know, we have a vinyl halide. And on this tin, we have some group right here, some CC double bond group that's on this tin. So this is going to be your nucleophilic group. Remember, this is usually your electrophile. And then we add some kind of palladium catalyst. And then usually in some kind of solvent, what we make is this new bond right here, this new CC bond between these two double bonds right here. So that's so again, the reason why this reaction is important or a way to differentiate it is that this has tin right over here. Okay, all right. So our next reaction that we were learning um, by uh, Suzuki and his uh, you know, postdoc, uh, Mio Ura, is the uh, suzuki Mio Ura coupling. And so there's two forms of this that I'm going to talk about. So in all forms, all of them will always have this kind of boronate. So this boron structure right here, usually with two O's in this case. Now, in this case, I wrote as alcohols, but you could, it just has to be two O's. Add a vinyl halide to it, so CC double bond with this halide right here, and you make a new bond between where this carbon was and where this carbon was, and you make that bond right there. So similar in scope to the steel coupling, except this time we didn't need tin. We can just use boron. So very exciting stuff. Again, also we use palladium. Palladium is a, basically a wonder metal. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, so that's one form is making this new CC double bond between these two alkenes. But let's say we had these two aryl groups right here. Well, again, we also see that boron group right there. So this is gonna be indicative of, indicative of the Suzuki reaction. We use some palladium, add another aryl halide, so not a vinyl halide, but an aryl halide. And what we get right here is this new CC bond between these two uh, between these two benzene groups right here, where this B used to be and where this X used to be. So keep that in mind. Again, we're making new bonds and different ways to differentiate that. Now, for the heck Mizuroki coupling, this time, we don't need any crazy special reagents. We just need the, uh, the specific uh, palladium catalyst. So in this case, we use palladium acetate, again, useful. We have some kind of base, so uh, tri tributylamine and some heat. Now, this time, we're using aryl halide, right? But this time, we also just add some kind of alpha beta species, so something with a CC bond, where the last bond is a CH2 or something like that. Well, if we do that, we make a new bond between where this X was right here and one of these H's on the end of this CC double bond. And so that's the new bond that we'll be making right here. Now, head coupling is also crazy because we don't need just an aryl halide. We don't need this benzene ring right here. In fact, this can be any aromatic halide. So what do I mean by aromatic? Well, what I'm talking about is this entire species right here. So this uh, furan right here with a BR, well, this is aromatic and there is a halide. So this can react with this H on this alpha beta species and make a new bond between that uh, furan and that alpha beta unsaturated species. Same thing with uh, this molecule right here. So this, uh, uh, well, I guess in this case, this aromatic compound with this I right here. And we see one of these H's right here. Well, we, we can make a new bond between those two, making that new bond right here. Again, in both cases, we use palladium catalysts, some base and some heat. 
So keep in mind all these different reactions that will be going forward from here. Okay, so let's uh, do one of our first reactions. Okay, so well, in our problem set right here, we have these two reagents. So again, some boron, so that should be an indicator for something. Uh, some halide, so okay, sure. And we use palladium catalyst. Okay, so what is our product? Well, first off, we should recognize that this is a Suzuki reaction, Suzuki coupling. And how do I know that? Well, the reason why I know that is because of this boron right here. This boron only shows up in Suzuki coupling right here, as seen this image right here. Okay, well, we can do that. And we make a new bond. If we know it's Suzuki coupling, we can new bond from this boron to wherever this bromine was right here. So our final product will look something like this. But there's now a new single bond between wherever these two species were from right here. Okay. All right, so our next problem then is right over here. So let's take a look at what we got. So we have some kind of aryl, some kind of aryl halide. It's good, well, we don't know what this is, but we can see the reagents we use. So we use some copper, some regular copper metal and pyridine. Well, okay, pyridine is a base, so keep that in mind. And well, these are the only two metals in this reaction. Okay, and then somehow we get this species right here with this being added right there. Okay, so what is this original product? Well, first off, we need to realize that this reaction is Castro Stevens. And how do I know that? Well, the reason why I know that is because these two metals are the only metals that show up no palladium. And we added a new bond between where this benzene ring is in the reactant and to something with the triple bond, so an alkyne. But if it's Castro-Stevens and it's an alkyne, well, there's no other alkyne that can react with this except for terminal alkynes, meaning that it had to be a triple bond and then whatever was attached on this other side also had to be attached because there's that phenyl group right here. Because of that, this is the missing reactant of this product. 